Hey guys, today I want to show you how to build a simple and dynamic pie chart so that you can, for example, change some of the values and the chart will scale itself automatically and you don't need to change the whole scene first. Okay, so this is our basic setup. We have the texture and the nexus node that are just there for the cool looks. We have a material node. It has to have another diffuse color for each part of our pie chart. We have a content container which we named part zero, which by now only consists of a simple cylinder, which is scaled a bit in the Z axis. The last thing we have is a float array, which is filled with six random values. And that's it. The first thing we need to do is to create six parts because we have six values and we want one value per part. And to do so, we will just drag and drop these parts downwards. We will have to rename it to part zero to part five, and we will change the color of our material nodes. So to see the results, we will just work with the first part for the next time. So we will block out the other parts by pressing control B. You will want to make sure that the interfacing for our parts is on now so we can apply changes to the other parts in an easy way by just dragging and dropping them. So now we have to consider a way to just draw a part of our cylinder and not always the whole cylinder. And we can do this by using those two properties of our cylinder node. We have the angle that will adjust the size of our cylinder and we can just turn this hole by changing the start angle. Now we'll have to consider a way to change the angle node so that it is always proportional to the size of our current value of the array. To do so we will use an array indexer to access a single value in our array. We can expose the array input so we can bind it to the array outside of our container. And we will use uh, container info to change the start index of our float indexer. We can take the container name index, so it will search for the number in our name of our container and apply it to this property. Now we can bind the angle property of our cylinder to the float indexer. We will take value 0 because this will always be the value of our container. So now we can apply the changes to the other parts and bind the array properties to our float array down here. The problem now is that we can't use the value of our array directly and apply it to the angle. So, for example, when we change the value below zero, the angle won't be proportional anymore. And we can just change this by adding a clipping node. We can use input values. We can adjust its minimum input, maximum input, and it will automatically clip it to the minimum output and max output values. So as the minimum input we will get zero because we don't want any values lower than zero. And we use the maximum input which will be the sum of all our values in the array because the sum will represent our angle of 360 degrees which we will add as the maximum output. So when we have just one value we will automatically get a maximum output of 360 degrees. So now we will have to calculate the maximum input value. To do so, we will have to loop through all our parts and for each part we will add the value of our array if it is higher than zero because we don't want any values lower than it and then sum it up in every part until we get to part five which will then output the whole sum of our array. To do so we can add a float expression. We will change its arguments a little so we can recognize them. We will use for example the name old sum and current input and we can now write the expression. Now we can bind the 
current input to our value zero of our float indexer again and we will expose the old sum so we can bind it to the result of the older expression node. So again apply the changes to all our other parts and now we can bind every old sum to the new sum of the container before. Once you're done with this, you will recognize that the new sum of our last container will output the sum of all our array values. Now we can store the sum in a node float variable. We will call it just sum and bind its value to the new sum value of our last container. So now we can expose the maximum input value of our clipping node, apply the changes to the other parts, and we can now bind the maximum input to our sum property. So when we now look at each part on its own, you will see that according to the size of our value in the array, the part will have a different size. Our next problem is that no matter which part we will choose, it will always be at the same start position, always at this angle right here, which is the angle zero. And we want to change it now so we can create a whole pie chart and not one that looks like this. To do so, we will use the start angle of our cylinder node and get the start index by the same source that uses the old sum property of our float expression and clip it again to our angles. So to do so we will add a float variable, we will de-expose the old sum property and in turn expose the float variable as the old sum. So we can rename it now and bind the old sum property of our new old sum variable. So now we can just bind the start index to our old sum variable again. We will then need to add a clipping node again like we did with our size of the angle and we will again use uh, 360 as max out and we will have to calculate the maximum input which is in our case again the sum. Now our start angle will be calculated with the old sum and when we unblock all these parts you can see that the whole pie chart is arranged in the right way. So we can change some of the array values and you can see it will change its parts dynamically. So much about our pie chart. You may want to watch the other videos about the bar chart or the line chart and I hope I will see you over there.